Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, such a wonderful morning. How do you feel, darling? Oh, not so bad. Isn't it? Isn't what? A wonderful morning. Oh, why should I be so sleepy when we went to bed early? I'd much rather be sleepy than not, though, wouldn't you? I'll tell you as soon as I wake up. Being married certainly is comfortable. Mm. Is that the best you can say for it? And so awfully nice. Mm. That's better. I wonder if Mom is up. Why should she be up this early? You know, David, I never thought it would be like this. So natural and everything. <laughs> Speaks an old married woman of two weeks. Two weeks in one day. That's when it either takes or doesn't take. We took. You know what I like best about it? Mm. There's always somebody to talk to, even in the middle of the night. Well, go on. I'm listening. And I like seeing you with your hair mussed. Makes you look just like my son. By which husband, Mrs. Norton? My first husband. And your last, I trust. That goes without saying. Darling, what do you like best about it? Marriage, I mean. Mm. You. I wish I'd thought to say that. Well, this isn't getting me to the office. I think offices should close after a person marries. For how long, would you say? Oh, three months. Seems reasonable. I'll see what I can do about it. Well, up we get. Help me, David. Help yourself. Two weeks and I'm on my own. Don't you know I got married so I could cling? You wouldn't know how. Well, I intend to learn. Not now, please. I've got to get dressed. All right, I'll start breakfast. David. Hmm? It's always going to be like this, isn't it? So perfect, David. I couldn't bear it if anything changed. Everything changes. Don't say that. Claudia, look at me. Yes? We change all the time. In little ways. Things around us change, too. We've got to expect that. Then, all of a sudden, something comes along that we don't expect. David, don't talk like that. And we've got to accept that, too. That's life, darling. Oh, how did we get on this subject so early in the morning? Yes, how did we? Now, what does a man have to do around here to get two boiled eggs? Consider them fried. I said boiled. Oh, where'd I put my bathrobe? Do you see it, David? No, I didn't see it. Hey, look in the closet, will you? Um, not here. Can I wear yours? Well, don't make a practice of it. Hey, what about those eggs? I'm going now. Gee, I didn't know you were so big, David. You must be about size 48. Only 44. Why? Don't you like it? I love it. Good morning, Miss Bra. Mama? Where is that woman? Mama. David, she's gone out. What? Mama's gone out. The sofa's all made up. David, where do you think she went? <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, you do look silly in that. <laughs> I couldn't find mine. <laughs> now I can't find you. David, what do you suppose? Where do you think she went? Out. You said so yourself. Where? What for? Oh, for the air, probably. Mama doesn't like the air. Well, maybe she likes it better than having breakfast with us. But we're so nice. I guess she just doesn't appreciate us. Hey, don't bother about the eggs, darling. I'm, I'm getting later by the minute. Oh, Mama left everything ready. She did? Mm-hmm. Wonderful woman. She probably asked for a raise. Probably. Come on, then. Let's eat. I'll finish dressing later. Good. I'm starving, too. I never saw such a girl in my life. You're always starving. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's inconvenient at times. Shove over. I'll make the toast. I'm shoved over, and I'll make it. Now, let's see, um... You like your toast burnt, don't you? Only around the edges. Oh, fine. See, you said only around the edges. Um, 
Let me see, how do I do that? That, my dear, is your problem. Say, do you think they have special kinds of toasters for that? Probably. Shop around. We like ours burnt in the middle. Not me. I told you only around the edges, like uh, hemstitching. Oh, you're very difficult. I work at it. Fussy, too. What's more, I'm proud of it. I love you anyway. David. Hmm? Breakfasts are wonderful, aren't they? Well, I always like one to start the day with. I mean, they're especially wonderful now. Most especially. You always going to like them? As long as you come with them. Now, how about that toast? Oh, I forgot. (laughs) Here, I better do it. No, I'll do it. You know, this is the first time I've ever gotten breakfast for a strange man. I think this is the first time you've ever gotten breakfast, period. (laughs) (laughs) Only I didn't get it. Mama got it. (laughs) Listen, maybe that's her. She. Are you still eating? I thought you'd be through by now. Not a decent word to say to us. Can't you say good morning? I was just coming to that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's go around again. No. Well, now that we've taught you some manners, sit down, Mama. Don't talk so much. Yes, we're very democratic. The cook can eat with the Mr. and Mrs. Certainly. Thank you, but the cook has eaten. I'll, uh, I'll take a little piece of your bacon, Claudia. Oh, Mommy, you remind me. I just remembered Aunt Louise is coming over tonight after dinner. Hey, hey. What's We've matter? only been home one night. Yes. What's your hurry, Claudia? Well, I couldn't help it. She invited herself. Oh, and that reminds me, where were you, Mrs. Brown, before breakfast? Wouldn't you like to know? Good for you, Mother. That's the way to handle her. Where did you go? I have absolutely no privacy around here. I went market. I hope you've got plenty of butter and eggs. I'm going to bake a cake. I was planning to teach you how to make a souffle for supper. Don't you dare interfere with the cook, Claudia. We'll have that souffle, Mother. Of course you will. The cake's for after dinner. You're going to be hungry after dinner, too. I'm going to show off for Aunt Louisa. Nobody says cake for company after dinner. Uh, Claudia likes cake, Mother. Besides, baking one will make me feel really married. I hereby resign. I don't blame you, David. For being so fresh, I wanted either of you to have one bite. I'll eat my words instead. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, where are you going? Put on my tie, to put on my coat, put on my hat, and then to the office, thank goodness. Take me with you, David. (laughs) Now, where are you going? Into the kitchen for a glass of water, do you mind? Don't be silly. Why should I mind? Now, let's see. You push it up. No, no, no. You push it down. Now, turn quickly. What I need is a hairpin. Oh, wait a minute. I'll, I'll try it once again. I'll Have any be... trouble with that key, David? Oh, hello, Mother. We locked out. Yes, I've been having trouble since 6-3. It is now 6-0-8. That key's never been right since Claudia stepped on it. Tell me, do I push up or down? Up. I'm pushing up. Give me a package so I can use both hands. No, no, that's, that's not the trouble. Oh, no? I thought you were going to get this latch fixed. I'm going to as soon as I can get inside to call up a locksmith. They're closed. Oh, you nearly dropped that package. Oh, don't worry. I've got it. Would it break? No, but wouldn't do it any good. David, give me that package. I'll just put it here on the floor. Now, try again. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Are you getting it? Uh, I give up. Maybe you'd better try, Mother. Maybe I'd better. I've lived with this longer than you have. Uh, do you want to give me your package? No, I can manage. Come on, come on. Hand over the package. I will not. Now, what's so important in that package that you won't even trust it to your son-in-law? Wouldn't you like to know? I've been doing this with packages for years, I think. You see? Hmm. Well, do come in. Oh, hello, darling. Say, let's get a new lock, shall we? Let's. Miss me? Hmm. You'll choke each other someday doing that. How's the cake? I don't know. It's still in the oven. I haven't dared look. Claudia, get a move on. Tend to your cake. <gasps> Gosh, my cake. You two go in the living room and I'll bring it in. Don't talk about me while I'm gone. <laughs> it's funny how a first cake can be a big moment in a woman's life, isn't it, Mother? Yes, isn't it, David? I hope it turns out. Mine didn't. David, what are you fussing with the sofa pillows mm-hmm. Just getting ready to sit down... What are you hiding under my newspaper? Nothing. I was reading it. Then just what is the same package you're not hiding under my newspaper? Aren't we getting a little too obvious? (laughs) Yes, I guess we are. I wonder how she's getting on. Oh! Oh, Now 
now you know. Look at it. It fell. Why, it, it doesn't look so bad. But it's burnt, too. I, I, I like burnt things, remember? Not this burnt. It looks like a lamb chop. Oh, I'm crazy about lamb chops. And I wanted to make a big splurge for Aunt Louisa. Now what will she say? Poor David. He had to go and throw himself away at a girl who can't even bake a cake. Well, I'll go out and buy one. That's downright dishonest, isn't it, David? And deceitful. What kind of a daughter did you bring up, Mrs. Brown? You heard? One that would go downstairs and buy a cake if the bakery weren't closed. She certainly would. Say, how do you know it's closed? Because I was the last customer. Mommy, you didn't go and buy... (laughs) Where is it? (laughs) Under the newspaper. Oh, you think of everything. I am surprised at you, Mrs. Brown. No faith in your daughter's talents. Not a bit. David... You really thought I could? Well, I, I, certainly I did. Then I disappointed you. Well, darling, as a matter of fact, I... Except, David, thanks for thinking I could do it. If you'll go on thinking, I'll go on trying. I'll try to learn to like cake. Don't you like cake, lovely cake like I bake? It's your problem, David. <laughs> I've only got the supper to worry about. <laughs> oh, David, I'm exhausted. Standing over a hot stove all day, wearing myself to a frazzle. <laughs> Let's sit down a minute. Uh, Claudia, not there. Be careful. That's not... Something's behind the pillows. What is it? A present for me? You'd better look for yourself. It's a, a cake. It's all squashed. Yep. It was a cake. A very soft cake. And you didn't think either that I could well, bake it. Sure I did. It's all right if you didn't, David. But I thought maybe... I know that... why you bought this one. Just in case. Just in case, because I love you. Oh, David. Don't ever change, Claudia. I wish dinner weren't going to be ready so soon. Me too. story material used in this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, there's good news for you, friends. You can now again enjoy the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola. Restrictions have been taken off. And the supply of Coca-Cola is almost normal, and more is coming all the time. There's enough now for refreshment for all hands when you give a party. And you can refresh yourself at the familiar red cooler, around the corner from almost anywhere. And the price is still five cents. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now, this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. (laughs) 